Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Don't get so quiet. Start yeah. 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 This is my grandson, John. I like him to walk. Yeah. I like him to walk to the pulpit with me because he's a pastor in training. I want him to do that. Worshiping God oh, with you. I'm man. glad to be back in the house. Yeah. There's more this time than there was last time. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I want you to know something. I was out there yesterday hooping and shouting and having a good time with a bunch of Christians also. So I'm fired up. This morning yeah. I got up early and I heard the word and I prayed and, and I'm ready. Praise I God. came loaded for bear today. <laughs> Woo! 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 Okay, I'm gonna sing a few songs this morning. <coughs> Praise the Lord. You know me when you're when I'm in the house, you're stuck with mariachi. That's yes. right. All right. I can do some soul for you guys too, but this morning I'm gonna do a few. I had a request for La Casa de Mi Padre, and I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna be singing oh, that this morning. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and have a good time. Amen. 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 Tell somebody, I sure do love you. I sure do love you. Amen. Love you guys. Love you, pastors. Thank you for having me today. Love you guys. Appreciate you. My daughter's with me today. My grandkids are with me. And she's going to come up and take a few pictures because I need uh, I need new evidence for my portfolio. <laughs> okay, so anytime you're ready to. Where's that music? I don't even know what I'm singing. Number five, let's try it. I'll tell you if it's the one I'm going to sing. You know what, honey? If it's too hard, give me number two. Oh, I got it. No, give me number two. Yeah, number two. Number two, I'm sorry. Right there. It's okay. Can we do it? Can we do it?
room tip one. Let me have that. Amen. You know, if you sing, don't drink cold water when you sing. And, and don't drink milk either. It's not good for your voice. What do I do? Give me a cold Pepsi. Lots of ice. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so blessed to be here. I'm telling you, you know what I've been with the Lord? I'm trying to figure it out. It's like about 45 years. And uh, man, I sure am blessed. Even last night, I'm not telling you who I was with or what I was doing. I was with a very dear beloved friend of mine, Pastor Del Castro. He's the, uh, the pastor over at Victory Outreach in uh, Riverside. And yesterday he got his doctorate degree. And so we were celebrating him and thanking the Lord for the great things he did. So I was hanging out over there with so many people. And then they came and asked me, do you still live in the street, Sister Terry? I said, okay. I was born in the streets. I need, what do you mean I hit them? I need to, I stay on them. And uh, they said, we were pioneered to work. And I thought, <laughs> and bingo, immediately my mind flashed to Pastor Cal on the <laughs> sister-in-laws are here yeah. in the house today. And uh, you know what? It was, it was amazing that, that I started to think that John, they're going to pioneer a little work right here in your hands. He said, do you, do you have any pioneering experiences? He said, pioneered in Chicago with Cal on my Pioneered down there in, uh, in San Diego. We pioneered in Imperial Valley. We pioneered in Parole. We pioneered in Chicago. And I thought it with uh, Steve Pineda and with the great photos. And it just started coming out of my mouth. And I thought, God, I've really been on the streets, you know. And I remember being in the desert, ladies, singing. And it was holy. Oh, Wind, and I couldn't open my mouth to sing because the sand would come right into my mouth. This sister was talking about they got this. She said, have you ever been there? That's where I, I went to my very first missionary excursion. And it was rough, let me tell you. God is so good. There's so much work to be done out there. And I'm excited, brother, that you're hitting the streets. Oh, Amen. hit the streets. Come on. Amen. The work's not over. It's not over. There's lots to be done. Amen. What am I going to say? Okay, just give me number 11 on the one that we just used right now. Number 11. I'm going to do La Casa de Mi Padre. I'm going to get into the word because um, I can feel my throat a little raspy. Can you hear me? Okay, and I want to sing this song. When people ask me to do a song, Thank I like, you, Terry. like to do Love it. Love you. Love you so too, much. honey. I'm so glad you guys are here today, man. And so, uh,
they've never broken down that particular book to you because a lot of people don't know about it on account of they're not Hebrew majors. But if you read that in Hebrew, you know what it says? Look, the Lamb's book of life. Now, there's lots and lots and lots of books in heaven. Wow. The main book is the one where he writes the name of the saints, people who got saved. My name is written in heaven in the blood of the Lamb. And it says, Terry Espinosa. Is your name there? Yeah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Get alive. Say, thank you. My name is Lord. But there's another book. The reason that there's so many books in heaven, there's volumes, is because God is writing the Lamb's book of life. Okay? And it's the life of Terry. The life of Mary. The life of John. The life of Gloria. The life of Sam. The life. You're, you've got a book in heaven. And the author is Jesus Christ. The life, the Lamb's book of Terry's life, as written by the Messiah, her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, help me. Did you know that? Okay, so he is writing your life. He wrote your life. After every sentence, he wrote your life before you were born. He wrote it, and there's a, a, a space in between, and a line, and then a space, and a line, and a space. And the reason for the space, I'll tell you, Jesus writes the first line, and he'll say, January the 1st, whatever year you were born, and he'll say, she was born, he was born. My plan for him is that he be a healthy, strong, perfect baby. Then there's a line in between. And that line is what you're going to write there. Your parents' decision. See, it, it's important that you be married when you're out having sex. Because what happens is... You came from the inside of God. Jehovah Samech. That means I am God, the ring. There's an empty spot inside of me. I am not missing anything. I'm not a lackey God, but there's a little patch that's empty inside of me. And the reason it's empty is because that's where you came from. The Bible says, I knew you before you were born. Before you were in your mother's womb. I know I'm hitting you with some real heavy stuff right now, but it's okay. You'll live. You'll learn. <laughs> and so what happens is sometimes, see, your spirit, your life, you came from inside of God. And, and when your mama and your daddy are conceiving you, you come through the heavenlies. That's a dangerous place to come through because the Bible says that the devil lives in the high places. The powers and the principalities live in the high places. So what you do when you come from the throne, from heaven, from the inside of God, is you come through the devil's territory. So you got to be covered, covered with covenant blessings. Your mom and dad should be, should be married to bring you through that journey. That's why a lot of babies are born sick. Some die. Things happen because they're not under covenant. That, that goes for believers and non-believers. So before you young women decide that you want to go lay with someone, make sure he puts a ring on your finger, okay? Yeah. Be blessed, woman of God. Be blessed. And that goes for even old women because old women too. Man, sometimes I go to these churches and these old ladies, and I'm talking 30, 40 old year old ladies, okay, they come in with short little skirts and their bosoms on display and they're not there to fellowship, they're there to fellow shop. <laughs> and I look at them half naked and I tell them, sister, you forgot something. Uh, when did I forget the rest of your clothes? 
Keep it holy, women of God. Keep it holy. And so the Bible says, I know the thoughts. I know the plans. And so what's happening, especially when you come to the age of reason, John Luke, what happens is that Jesus is writing the story of your life. And in that book, he's talking about what a good life you're going to have, what a perfect life you're going to have, what a holy life you're going to have, how, how wealthy you're going to be, how prosperous, how mentally and spiritually and emotionally sound you're going to be because of his blood sacrifice. But then you step in with your sinful nature and you write your own line in between those spaces. Then you come to the place where Jesus says in the book, today I will offer her my salvation. How many times did you reject the salvation before you said, okay? And then is when the book changes. Afterwards you say yes, and he says, yes. Today she said, yes, I came into her 